Today, I'll show you how to add authentication and authorization in your ASP.NET Core web application with JSON Web Token. So let's get coding. Okay, open up uh, Visual Studio, create a new project. This will be an ASP.NET Core web application. Select that. If you can't find it, search, uh, search it in the uh, search bar right there. Click Next. Give it a name. Give it a location and then click Next again. And then here, I'm going to choose .NET Core 3.1. No authentication type. And click Create. So here we are. A few things that we need to do is to install three uh, packages. So if you open up Solution Explorer, uh, then right click on the dependencies and manage new get packages. The first one is Microsoft ASP.NET Core authentication.jwt bearer. One important thing to note is that if you have created a .NET Core 3.1 application, then make sure you choose 3.1.24 JWT bearer because anything above that uh, will not be compatible with the ASP.NET Core, uh, with .NET Core 3.1. So just make sure that you choose that. If you're working with .NET 5, uh, then um, higher versions of the G JWT bearer package uh, will work. But in this case, 3.1, that's, um, that's all you need to do. Okay, the next package that we need to install is um, dot .tokens. So identity model dot .tokens. Uh, this is it. Um, and you can choose this one. It's fine for the rest of the packages to install the latest stable versions. Um, and then last but not least is identity models. Uh, tokens.jwt. Okay, let's finish installing. So I'm going to paste in the description section um, all the all the packages so that you can go ahead and uh, copy and paste them uh, as you wish. Okay, so installing the latest one, that's finished. Okay, following, the next step is to uh, set up app settings.json. So if we close everything and then we go to the root of our project and then open up app settings, app settings.json, I've got a snippet that I've already uh, created. I'm just going to paste that in. So this is a new section, JWT, that I have created that's got a key that's uh, randomly generated. Link in the description with a website that's just uh, generated a, a random string of, of uh, characters uh, and numbers. Uh, and then we've got an issuer and an audience. And uh, we need two addresses here, which in our case are going to be um, similar. Uh, so if we right click on the, uh, on the web project, on the web app and then go to properties and then navigate to the debug tab scroll down and you will see that uh, right next to so in the web server setting uh, settings section we've got enable SS, uh, ssl and then we've got uh, an address here uh, that url is what we need to paste in here so both the issuer and the audience so um, the server that's going to issue the JWT token and the audience, uh, the one that's uh, that's going to uh, use it, are going to have the same address. Uh, so that's uh, it with uh, setting up app settings.json. Following, we need to set up startup.cs file. Um, so if we open up startup.cs and uh, scroll down to configure services, so we've got that method right here. It should be on line 24. Okay, so inside the configure services, inside startup.cs, we need to uh, add um, the configuration part for the JWT bearer. Uh, so that's the first thing. So we do services.add authentication. And then in here, we define JWT, we say, um, we pass in the authentication scheme as JWT bearer defaults. Um, and that's not it. By the way, if you haven't got this already um, imported in your startup.cs, just press control dot and then hit enter. And then one of the packages uh, should uh, just import automatically inside the inside, uh, inside startup.cs. Then following, we don't uh, put a semicolon at the end. We do a dot add JWT bearer. And then we define an options object that we need to define. So we need in order to in order for this to work properly, we need to set this up with our custom properties with our custom options. We need to define the options dot token validation parameters. Um, and obviously, we need to um, initialize that uh, with a token validation parameters uh, object. So uh, we need to uh, tell the API that every time you receive a request um, with where you've got the authorized tag in it, then validate the issuer uh, that we have defined earlier uh, inside app settings.json. Obviously, validate the audience as well. 
uh, validate lifetime and then validate the issuer signing key. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we need to validate that as well if we are going to provide the signing key. Um, it could be optional, but um, just to make it more secure, to add an extra layer of security, um, we are going to define a private key. Uh, then the valid issuer that we define is um, from the configuration, so from appsettings.json, and we're accessing it using JWT colon issuer. That's the path to it, right? So JWT is the section, and then issuer is the actual value. So this is what we're going to import in there. And this, um, this is uh, better than just uh, pasting this string in here, uh, because this is an app secret. So um, when you get to deploy this, uh, you'll obviously I'll be able to replace the uh, the value in app settings.json with um, the issuer on the server and the audience address on the server and so on. Um, so that following, we define the uh, the valid audience that this is going to be uh, that the um, a token will be validated against uh, in here as well, and then the issuer signing key. We are doing a symmetric key, so we're uh, creating a symmetric security key. Um, and obviously we're encoding that uh, JWT key um, so that we can create the symmetric security key. So that's how we um, that's how we uh, define the options of the token validation parameters. Following, we need to add a couple of lines again in this configure services method. That's going to be services dot uh, add MVC and services dot um, add controllers. Um, and that is it with configure services. Then in the next part, what we need to do is um, add a couple of uh, lines, a couple of configurations inside the startup.cs configure method. So this is different to configure services. In here, we, uh, we are aiming for the configure method. And in here, we need to add authentication and uh, map the controllers because if we don't do that uh, when uh, we get to create the uh, API controllers that we're going to use throughout the application we won't be able to access them so very important uh, to do this step um, so the first thing that we want to do in here is app dot use authentication yeah so that we can uh, we can allow for the API endpoints to uh, authenticate the users and then last but not least endpoints dot map controllers map controllers that's it with setting up uh, startup.cs right now let's add a models folder to hold our three models one will be the user model uh, that's going to hold all the data about a user so this is going to be some sort of like an ASP.NET user uh, entity in the uh, EF core but obviously we're not going to work with an EF core database with a SQL server database uh, therefore we're just going to simulate the presence the presence of it uh, so user model user login that's going to have only username and password and the uh, user constants that's going to be some sort of like a database holder for us okay so um let's right click on the project add and new folder models and then in here like i said three classes the first one user model user model and this is going to be a public class and i'm pasting in the the properties right now so we've got a username a password an email address a security role a surname and a given name so pretty simple then the second one will be user login and obviously you can pass in the api the um, username and the password uh, but it's uh, it's better to do it like this it's best practice you'll see what i mean so user login and this is going to have just a couple of strings username and password that's it and then lastly, the user constants. So right click, add new class, and let's call this user constants. And this just holds uh, a list of two users that I have already created for us. Um, one is called JSON admin, and it's an administrator. It's got a role of an administrator. And then one is called, the other one is called a list seller, and it's got a security role of seller. Um, so this is it with this step with setting up our uh, models that we're going to use throughout this application. Okay, following uh, here is the meaty part. We'll add the API controller. So the first API controller that we want to add is the login controller, which is the one that will 
authenticate the user as well as will uh, generate the token for for the user uh, based on the user details that are um, found in the database based on the username and password um, so let us create a um, controllers folder so controllers then in here let's create a uh, an api controller so right click add new item and then type in API if you don't already see it. And let's call this login controller. So this is an API controller uh, that's inheriting from controller base. Okay, the first thing that we want to do obviously is to initialize the, uh, to inject the I configuration so that we can have access to all the details from app settings.json. So I'm just going to find a private I uh, configuration. Um, property at the top of the field at the top of this class uh, that's going to be called config um, and then if you type in ctor and double tab um, then we can actually inject this so i'm just going to copy and paste this here without the underscore um, so that i can do config dot uh, config equals to uh, the config uh, object that's passed in so this is how we inject things um, then the very first method is obviously login so this is going to allow anonymous. This is an annotation uh, that will um, prevent the authorization process, the authentication process to happen um, at the point of calling this method because this is the very first thing that the user is ever going to call in this application, the login method. Obviously, if they're not already logged in. Okay, um, so this is a HTTP post. And then this is a public returns an I action result and it's called log login. Okay. And uh, this is going to take from body. Oops. So from body, um, a user login object. And let's import that really quick. Um, let's call this user login. So again, this user login only has username and password. We could have easily just passed in uh, those two strings in the in this in the parameter section. However, uh, it's best practice to just wrap it in a in a DTO in a data transfer object. Um, so, in here, obviously, we're not going to have all these methods yet, but we're going to create them. But the very first thing to do is to grab the uh, all the user details based on the username and password. So, we do var user. And then we call a method called authenticate. But wait, there is no authenticate method. We're going to create that in a bit. So let's pass in user login. And then if user is not null, yeah, uh, then let's generate the token. So var token equal to generate. And then we pass in the user. Uh, this user will contain all the user details. Uh, this is going to be, uh, be uh, created from um, user from, from the user model class. Okay, uh, and then obviously we found it here, so let's just return this uh, token in an OK object, um, in an OK response. Yeah, but then if we uh, couldn't, uh, if we could not find the user, then let's return not found, not not found, with a message user um, not found. So that way we know that the user name or user password are wrong. Um, okay, then let's generate these two methods. And this is the authenticate and the generate. And to do that, you just uh, control dot on them. And obviously the return types are a bit messed up because uh, this generate should just return a string and should take in um, a user model, user model. And then this authenticate should return a user model and uh, yeah it takes in a user login so we're good to go now so let's first uh, work on the authenticate method so the first thing that we do is obviously we return the current user based on the user login information so that um, when uh, the username obviously I'm doing to lower because uh, the username is case insensitive it's like the uh, email address in a login form um, so if we found the username that's matching the uh, login username um, that we have provided as part of this object that we're passing in, but then if the password is the same as the password, then return the return the entire uh, object from the user constants uh, dot users. So this will be 
uh, this class right here. You could have just easily uh, call EF Core to do this for you. Um, so use EF Core with SQL Server database, but this is not the point of this tutorial. Okay, so once we have that user, obviously we don't know whether or not it's going to be found or not. So uh, we check in. Uh, if the current user is not null, then just return the current user with all the details that you found about it. Uh, otherwise, just return null. So that's the authenticate method. Worth noting that this is not a proper authentication, so you shouldn't do this in your application, in your production application. This is just for testing purposes to simulate the process of uh, authenticating the user and uh, basically validating username and password. Okay, next thing is to configure the um, generate uh, method that's gonna this is gonna generate the JWT token based on the user details that we grabbed from our so-called database the first thing to do is to uh, grab the security key and define it as a uh, symmetric security key and this is if you remember the, um, the same exact thing that we have done inside the startup uh, class we're grabbing a randomly generated string of characters that's gonna be um, our public string uh, then the second thing is to define a credentials object based on the security key so the signing credentials that's going to be um, in included inside the uh, JWT token the job token so here we're using SHA-256 uh, HMAC SHA-256 obviously as a, as a, um, a security algorithm as a hashing algorithm and then we define a bunch of claims and claims are just a way to store uh, data about the user or about the um, the the, pro the process uh, and the, what we're storing at the moment is a bunch of claim types and these are um, already registered claim types that we haven't uh, we haven't customized these are uh, set in stone registered claim types and if you don't know what I mean I have already got a video where I'm um, talking about I'm explaining uh, the different types of claims and the components of a JWT token so if you haven't already seen that check out the description after this video or check out the end cards uh, and you'll be able to see it um, okay so we have an, a name identifier an email address uh, that we're just grabbing the user's email address and then a given name surname and the security role and the security role is important uh, because we can actually uh, use that to provide some level of access inside our APIs um, okay so after we define our array of claims the next thing to do is to define the token object and what will it look like uh, and in this case we're gonna uh, be doing a new uh, JWT security token and the first part is going to be the issuer and uh, it's important to pass the issuer and the audience because this is uh, what the API will validate once it re um, once it uh, receives a request with a JWT token so it will check has the issuer changed in the meantime from the one that you have defined in here or has the um, um, has the audience changed from the one that you've defined in the in the startup class the next one is the list of claims obviously we've already talked about them and then when it expires then it's recommended to do, uh, for a secure G, uh, JWT token to not last more than 15 minutes and then the signing credentials which we have um, already created right here and that is it so as soon as we have created this uh, JWT security token then we call JWT security token handler and then we call the write token and we pass in the token object so that's it this should return a string now uh, so that is it with uh, setting up our login controller if you save and let's quickly run the app and let's test what we've got so far to try to uh, to attempt to authenticate our users and let's generate a, um, a JWT token so that we can get a, get a hold of it and use it uh, later on in this video Okay, so uh, the app has started, and if we copy the uh, URL, uh, let's uh, attempt to log in. So uh, to log in, we do API slash API. So localhost um, localhost colon, and then the port that you have um, in your in your um, application URL. Um, and then slash API slash login and then in here to be able to log in let's um, with the username and password let's go to the body tab and let's go to raw and uh, let's select JSON so then in here let's log in with JSON admin and let's uh, see if we can uh, hit this um, uh, login breakpoint uh, 
uh, now. So let me put a breakpoint right here and let's click send. So this is a get method and it's going to do a method not allowed. Let's select the post method because that's what we defined inside the API. And it looks like uh, we've hit the API. Uh, so let's step into the authenticate method. Obviously, compare the username and the password and the user is not going to be null so just return the current user with all the uh, details that we have defined in the user constants uh, class define that um so yeah so get that user and then if it's not null obviously go in the generate method and generate me a, a jot token so grab the security key this is what the object looks like and then uh, define the credentials that we're gonna um chug into the uh, jot token define the the claims this is the username the email address given name surname and the security role so then define the J, uh, jwt security token and then write it so in essence generate it so here we go this is this is the um a string the jot token that we're gonna be using to be able to authenticate to, to be able to let the api um authenticate and recognize the fact that we are authenticated and validate our um, uh, our identity. Okay, so if we continue, if you can see in the in the body right here, we have got the DWT token uh, generated for us. Next, what we will do, we'll set up the user controller. Okay, so back in the application, let's stop the app, uh, close the login controller because we won't need it anymore for this tutorial, and then add, and then new item, and then again, new API controller, and let's uh, call this a user controller. And we're going, to we're going to define a bunch of endpoints as part of this user controller um, to be able to show uh, whether or not we can uh, hit those uh, endpoints if we are authenticated, um, and if we're not, what happens? Um, so the first thing that I would like to do is uh, let's uh, add a public endpoint right here uh, to say hi you're on public property and let's try to um, to uh, hit that just to make to make sure that we are actually able to hit methods inside this uh, endpoint to alleviate the confusion so let's run the app and let's go back to postman and let's try to hit this uh, endpoint Okay, so the app has not started, and um, if we copy the URL, go back in Postman, and then uh, open up a new tab, and then let's paste that in there. So this is going to be API slash user slash public, and uh, this is going to be a get method. So let's send it, and let's see what we've got. Hi, you're on public property. So we are now uh, able to hit uh, endpoints inside that uh, controller. Okay, so back in our application, uh, let's uh, add a helper function that will allow us to grab the user details based on the uh, JWT token uh, passed in. So basically, when we um, were in the login controller, if you remember, we have defined a bunch of claims. Basically, these claims hold uh, useful information about the user without us having to go back to uh, the uh, database to request details about the user. So every time you uh, make a request, you send uh, with the request that JWT token that holds all these useful details about the user that we can use inside our um, example user controller. So the first thing, uh, let's uh, define this as get current user. And uh, we're going to grab the identity from HTTP context.user.identity as claims identity, because this is what it is. And if that is not null, uh, then um, grab the claims um, um, array of claims and this is basically just an I enumerable of claims and then let's create a new user model um, based on the claims that we have so if we uh, we are looking through the um, the user claims and we're grabbing based on uh, type so if you remember we have defined in the user controller certain types and these are uh, registered uh, claim types and uh, we are doing the same to be able to identify those types so if the type is name identifier then grab that uh, grab that value and put in the username property of this object so as you can see we have stored the username in the name identifier and we're doing exactly the same thing with uh, email address given name surname and the security role and then Return null, basically, if uh, if uh, the identity is not found, then uh, return null. So this is uh, really useful because we're going to use this uh, quite a bit um, in the following minutes. Okay, following, let's define an endpoint that will actually require us to be authenticated. So we're not going to be able to access that endpoint unless we are authenticated. And uh, this is going to be, again, a HTTP method. So HTTP get. 
and then uh, the uh, route to this will be um, say admins yeah because uh, we're gonna use we're gonna actually um, after this we are going to um, add authorization so only if you are an administrator you can access this endpoint but for now you should only be authenticated so you should only have a valid uh, token uh, okay so this is a http get uh, get uh, and then this is going to be a public i action result uh, and let's call this admins endpoint it won't make a difference again it won't make a difference uh, your uh, security role at this point um, so then in here let's grab the current user current user that's going to be get current user so this method right here uh, and we don't need to pass anything in because this grabs the user claim so all the details from the HTTP context so uh, let's uh, let's just return uh, in an okay message uh, if everything went okay uh, let's say um, hi and then let's give the current user um, given name and then let's say um, you are an and um, or a um, and then let's put in the um, security role right here so current user dot uh, role yeah um, and then basically in here uh, it will say something along the lines of hi Jason you are an administrator so let's save this let's run the app and let's see uh, what we've got Okay, so uh, we're back in Postman, the uh, app has started, and uh, in here let's um, uh, target the admins uh, endpoint, and let's click send, and uh, what is going on? So basically, we are not authenticated, and uh, we are able to access that endpoint. Well, that's because we haven't added uh, uh, the uh, authorize, authorize, um, notation right here so basically we need to add this authorized in order for the api to validate the stock and that's the whole deal so uh, at this point if we have a valid jwt token generated and passed along with the request um, then we will be able to access this endpoint failing that we won't be able to so let's try that again okay so uh, the app has started and uh, let's try that again so you'll see it returns a 401 unauthorized and uh, to be able to access that endpoint we need to be authenticated meaning that the JWT, JWT token needs to be passed in along with the request so if we uh, go back in here let's uh, let's actually generate a brand new one it's not been more than 15 minutes but hey uh, we want to make sure that that actually is a fresh newly generated token with the JSON administrator um, okay, so then in here we need to go to um, instead of just sending this as it is, we need to go to authorization and then from the type of authorization choose bearer token uh, and then paste this uh, new security key. So yours is probably going to be empty like that and then paste that um, a job token, not security key, job token. Uh, so then let's try that again. And as you can see, um, the uh, API endpoint, the API has authorized this. Um, as um, we are successfully authenticated because we've passed in a valid fresh new token uh, generated uh, for us so that the current user is JSON admin with all the details and we purposely don't, didn't uh, grab the password as well and um, let's see what we've got so hi Jason you are an administrator and obviously if we log in with uh, Elise which will be uh, inside uh, user constants so if we go and grab they've got the same password so at least uh, seller yeah so if we log in and generate an, uh, a JWT token with Elise uh, then replace this uh, replace Jason's token with Elise's token then uh, this breakpoint has already been uh, hit hi Elise you are a seller uh, and seller well that doesn't really matter at this point um, because we haven't made the distinction between the two different security roles uh, but how do you make a, dis a distinction because this uh, endpoint surely should only allow admins to be to be able to access it well basically what you do is in order to enforce um, authorization between different security roles what you do is open and close uh, uh, the, the parentheses and then you put you define the roles uh, property right here so this would be an administrator 
So at this point, if we run the app at this point, we shouldn't be able to access this endpoint with Alice's generated token. So let's give that a try and let's see how it works. Okay, so the app has started. Let's go back to Postman and uh, let's try this again as it is with Alice's uh, token. And uh, what you will see is not will not be a 401. Um, it will be a 403 forbidden. So you are authenticated, but you are not who you uh, who you claim to be. Or better yet, this particular endpoint is not for you. You haven't got the right access or the right level of access, which we have defined right here to be able to access that. And let's stop the application and let's create one for Elise uh, as well. So copy and paste this and this will be uh, sellers. Yeah. And then in here, let's define the role as the seller. And um, keep in mind this role, we have defined this role right here. Uh, this is the um, Elise's role, this is the seller, and this is the administrator, the JSON's uh, security role. So basically, we have said that the role should be of administrator right here, and then for Elise, uh, that it should be a seller. Make sure that the names match uh, right here. So let's call this seller, uh, seller's endpoint. Uh, so then here, let's uh, change this. Um, okay, let's uh, give this another run. Let's see how it works. Okay, this is run now and uh, let's uh, try, um, so again, the admins, we're not going to be able to access the admins, so um, nothing changed in that endpoint. However, if we say here sellers, so go ahead and uh, access the sellers endpoint, uh, let's take a look at the response. So hi Alice, you are a seller, so 200, okay, so it's been, we have been able to authenticate successfully and we have been authorized. Uh, so in here, if we uh, log in with... Um, uh, if we log back in with uh, JSON's uh, credentials, so let's generate a token for JSON and then let's paste in this token for uh, for JSON and let's try to access seller's endpoint with JSON's, uh, that's an administrator, uh, credentials. So as you can see, we've got a, four, a 403 forbidden. One last thing that I want to uh, stress is how do you access, uh, how do you say, um, uh, define an endpoint that's... Um, that's going to allow only a certain types of uh, security roles to um, to be able to access it. Well, that's very simple. Let's uh, create another one. And uh, let's say in this one, in the roles, so let's say, um, uh, I don't know, admins and sellers. Yeah. Uh, so in here, this is going to be the, uh, the uh, route to it. And then in here, uh, instead of just saying administrator, let's put a comma. And let's say a seller as well. So only this particular role. So should you have in your application more security roles such as a buyer and uh, whatever, any type of other security role, uh, this endpoint will only allow uh, administrators and sellers uh, to access it. Right, so that's it with today's tutorial. If you want to get into even more details about what a JWT token is, how it works and why it's important, check out this video on the screen right now. Until next time, stay safe.